This video talks about oxygen dissociation curve. And uh, in our oxygen dissociation curve, this is on page 563, first day 2012. So if you want to follow along with me, please do so. So in an oxygen dissociation curve, on the x-axis, we are going to see partial pressure of oxygen. And on the y-axis, we're going to see hemoglobin saturation. Now, this blue curve is our normal blood uh, curve for the oxygen dissociation curve. And you, you can see that this curve is sigmoidal in shape. And the reason this curve is sigmoidal in shape is because of hemoglobin oxygen cooperativity. What does that mean? It means that hemoglobin has the ability to bind to four oxygen molecules. And when one binds, the other binding becomes easier. And then the next one becomes even more easier. And the next one becomes more easier. So this phenomena is the cooperative binding of oxygen, okay, which gives the sigmoidal shape. So initially it's hard, but then it kind of gets easier, the binding. Look at myoglobin. Myoglobin does not have a sigmoidal shape. And that's because myoglobin has a hemoglobin, but it only can bind to one oxygen molecule, right? So myoglobin does not have uh, this, this cooperative relationship, so myoglobin only binds to one molecule of oxygen. So sometimes this normal curve shifts right or shifts left. So what are the factors that cause this curve to shift right? I use the mnemonic CADET. I like this mnemonic more than the other ones. So C is going to be for carbon dioxide, A is going to be for altitude or acid, D is going to be for DPG, 2,3 DPG, E is going to be for exercise, T is going to be for temperature. So now this begs the question, why the curve shifts to the, to the right when these factors are present? Why not to the left? That's because when these factors happen, there is less affinity of oxygen binding. When there is more carbon dioxide, the hemoglobin is going to dissociate and give off its oxygen a lot more readily. Where in high altitude, oxygen is going to be given off a lot more readily. In presence of acid, oxygen is going to give off a lot more readily. 2,3-DPG makes oxygen give up, uh, hemoglobin give off oxygen a lot more readily. Same in exercise and, and in temperature. So the, there is decreased affinity for oxygen. And the opposite is going to happen when it's going to move to the left. There is going to be increased affinity for oxygen, okay, when it moves to the left. Now, uh, some, some factors, for example, fetal hemoglobin has very high affinity for oxygen, right? So that's why curve to the left is going to be seen in fetal hemoglobin, the, sh the curve will shift to the left. And myoglobin is obviously shifted to the left because it's not sigmoidal and it has more tight binding than hemoglobin. So that is, uh, that is a summary of our oxygen dissociation curve. Now let's talk about carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide binds to oxygen very, very tightly. It, it's so tight that it, it does not let go. And one thing we have to realize that with uh, carbon monoxide, this curve or carbon monoxide does not equilibrate uh, when it reaches the end of the capillary. I will talk more about this when I do diffusion limited and perfusion limited graphs. So, so we can see that because of tight binding of carbon monoxide with hemoglobin at 50% the curve is much lower because this is the, this is the saturation, right? The saturation drops, um, sorry, the saturation, yes, the saturation drops um, as the partial pressure of oxygen um, goes up, right? Because, uh, because of this tight binding of hemoglobin with carbon monoxide. And that's why people die from carbon monoxide poisoning because their oxygen cannot bind to their hemoglobin. 